All right, Charlie. Neighborhood of make believe. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So. Let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please, won't you be my neighbor? My neighbor. We have an amazing community, amazing kids, and simply the best team in the world. I am honored to live and serve in this neighborhood. Didn't our neighborhood look great as the bus traveled through it? It's a beautiful day in KCSD is our theme for the year and be like Mr. Rogers is our goal. A little about Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers neighborhood first aired in 1968 on national education television which we know as PBS today and ran all the way through 2001 and had approximately 900 episodes providing a reassuring voice to millions of kids regularly. He dedicated his life to helping children and families through television and talked to us honestly about difficult subjects. As a result of his work, he received the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2002 and the Lifetime Achievement Award, as we know the Emmy Award for Lifetime Achievement in 1997 just to name a couple of the multiple honors he received. Team, join me as we take a moment to view our goals. And of course, we're going to review our core values. And reviewing our mission is always very important. Each of these are very important and significant to ensure we continue our march toward becoming world class for our kids. Additionally, in the days ahead, you will hear a great deal about our district action plan, which is 15 key action items that we are focusing on to ensure we live up 
to these expectations for our amazing kids and our wonderful neighborhood. However, today we are going to talk about being more like Mr. Rogers. There are a lot of challenges in the world we live in today, and we truly are dealing with an unprecedented time in our life, and today more than ever, we need to care for, support, and help our neighbors. Mr. Rogers addressed this type of issue in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Let's see what Mr. Rogers taught us about dealing with difficult or scary times. Mr. Rogers said, when I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look to the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. During this unprecedented time, it is imperative that we all strive to be like Mr. Rogers. We all must help each other. We must help our kids. We must help our families. And we must help our community and our neighbors. When Mr. Rogers gave his acceptance speech for his Lifetime Achievement Award, he had all of those in attendance complete this simple exercise. And I'm going to ask you to do this with me today. Let's take 10 seconds and think about someone who helped you get to where you are today. Go. Could you see them? What did they do that helped you? Did they say something that motivated you? Did they reach out to you in a time of need? Did they make you feel special? Or did they help you see a future that you could not see for yourself? How will you help others the way they helped you? How can the KCSD neighborhood help each other? We can be fully transparent and honest with each other at all times. We can provide social and emotional support to each other. We can be good listeners for each other and we can always be positive. We can let people know they are special and we can be kind and most importantly we can always be ourselves. Wait, I think I heard something. There's a knock at the door. Let's see who it is. Hello, Paula. Good day, Dr. Webb. How are you? Good. This is our Director of Health Services, Ms. Paula Russ. Thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for Paula? this opportunity to speak to our friends in our neighborhood. Wonderful. Paula, we're talking about Mr. Rogers and how he all taught us to be better helpers for our neighbors. What are some things you can share with us to make sure we're all better neighbors? Well, first of all, thank you for social distancing. I'm going to take off my mask now so I can talk a little bit more freely. We need to be good neighbors. We need to start with a few things. Good hand hygiene for one, wash your hands well many times a day. If not, hand sanitizer is always a second best. Wear our mask at all times when we're uh, transitioning between classes or rooms. Now if you're stationary in a classroom, you can take your mask off if you're using social distancing. And also too, remember we're going to take temperatures every day for our students that enter the classroom. Our staff that are coming back to school will complete the back to work form, so we're sure that they will self monitor every day to make sure they don't have COVID symptoms and they don't have a fever. 100.4 or above, don't come to work. And then second of all, social distancing, right? That is the most important thing. If we keep our social distancing, we stay safe. Well, wonderful. And Paula, thank you for sharing with us how we can all be better neighbors. Well, thank you. Have a great day. You too. Thank you, Nurse Paula, for sharing some wonderful ways we can all be better neighbors and helpers. Let's take a look at some other lessons we can all learn from Mr. Rogers to ensure we can be more like him. There are three ways to ultimate success. The first way is to be kind. The second way is to be kind. And you guessed it, the third way is to be kind. Mr. Rogers also talked to us about anger management. We all get angry at times, right? Mr. Rogers knew that getting angry was something that occurred in life. Understanding anger was a part of life and he taught us how to manage it. He used to say, I found 
that if I played the piano when I was angry, my parents didn't mind that, he said. And then, little by little, I'd see the music would be sounding less and less angry. So it seemed the more I played, the more anger got out of me, and I felt better about everything. The thing to remember is that we're in control of our anger. It does give you a good feeling to know that there's something that can, you can do to help you become the master of the mad that you feel and not have to hurt yourself or anybody else, he said. He also taught us that friends supporting friends is very important. Some people think that friends are always happy, always having fun. Well, that's not true, said Mr. Rogers. Friends often have hard times and sad times, but friends can come together again and again and build a stronger and stronger friendship between each other. Let's all focus on being better friends during the 2021 school year. Mr. Rogers taught us about our feelings. Everyone has lots of ways of feeling, and all of those ways of feeling are fine. Because at the end of the day, it's what we do with our feelings that matter in this life. He also said, I trust that you're growing in ways that will help you with whatever feelings you may have. When you're a child and when you're a grown-up, I hope you're able to respect whoever you are inside. He also talked to us about not being defined by only one thing. There isn't a whole lot we can do about our outside sort of growing. Some of us grow tall, some of us grow short, some of us have one skin color, and some of us have another. But no matter who we are on the outside, it's the inside that matters, he continued. That's all outside sort of stuff, but we all have insides too, and our insides have a different way of growing. We can always try to remember that we are much more than any one thing. We're much more than our arms, our legs, our eyes, our skin, or our hair. We're even more than our thoughts. When you put us all together, we are a beautiful, marvelous, spirited, lovely, wonderful, one of a kind. Mr. Rogers consistently reminded us to embrace who we are as we are all unique and have our own gifts. If you could sense how important you are to the lives of those you meet, how important you can be to the people you may never have dreamed of, there is something of yourself that you leave at every meeting with another person. Wait a minute, I hear something. Let's see who it is. This is a virtual knock on the door. Let's all welcome our Lieutenant Governor, Ms. Jacqueline Coleman, as she shares a very important message with our team. Hello, Kenton County. This is Lieutenant Governor Jacqueline Coleman. As a fellow educator, I know how stressful the last few months have been. This pandemic has forced us all to adapt and to make sacrifices, and I am proud to say that our schools have met this challenge with courage and compassion. COVID-19 might be unprecedented, but the work being done by our teachers is not. You have once again gone beyond the bounds of your duties to make sure that no child goes without food, support, and learning in their homes. Thank you. Governor Bashir and I have said that our administration's priority is on education. This virus hasn't changed that. We are going to make sure that our teachers and students have the support they need through this pandemic and long after it's over. You can count on us to remember teachers, to protect your interests, and to value your work. That work may continue to look a little different for a while, but our goals remain the same. So let's continue the good work we've already begun Let's continue to be a good neighbor. I'm excited for the future of public education in this state, and I am so grateful that we are all in this together, ready to get it done. Thank you so much for everything you do, Team Kenton, and I hope to see you in person very soon. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Coleman, for sharing with our neighbors here in Kenton County. For over 30 years, the world had a view of Mr. Rogers, but was he really a good neighbor? Let's take a look at the real Fred Rogers. I felt like I was touched by an angel when I met Mr. Rogers.
we received a call from the school principal saying that something wasn't quite right with Beth. When I walked into the nurse's room, she was able to lift her left arm up and she said, Ma, me. That's all she could do when she was shaking violently. And that was the beginning of a horrendous two and a half years, which I would end up having a hundred seizures a day. There's this one in a million brain disorder, and it's called Rasmussen's encephalitis. And the prognosis is not good. Her brain is dying, and the only cure right now is a hemispherectomy. Dr. Carson, who is now the Secretary of HUD, at that time was the only person in the United States who was doing it, and Beth was Six. the sixth hemispherectomy that he performed. We didn't even realize what that entailed fully. And he said it's the removal of her entire left hemisphere. The most amazing thing happened whenever I watched Mr. Rogers. Something about his voice allowed my body to relax and I would not have one seizure the entire half hour. His show was on the TV screen. I like you, my dear. Thank you very much for telling me that. One day, I was getting ready for work. I went down and peeked down the stairs, and she was talking to Mr. Rogers. She would say, I'm scared. I'm scared of my surgery. I thought, well, maybe she would feel good if she got an autographed photo from, from him. I said, Beth, there's somebody on the phone who said he's your friend. And she said, a friend. And she got on the phone, hi, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> and Bethy said, I'm afraid that I'm going to die. And I'm afraid I'm going to leave my brother because he's my best friend. And we were so horrified that this little seven-year-old was thinking that she was going to die. And how did he make you feel? Oh my God, he brought me back to life. I knew I was gonna survive this operation just because of what he was telling me. Day after day, week after week, and then it was coming months, yeah. she was still in the coma. Mr. Rogers would call the hospital to check up on me. We were waiting in Beth's room, and in comes this man who, you know, we only saw on TV, and he had a clarinet case, and he said, please, just one condition, just one requirement. I don't want any press. I want it just to be between Beth and myself. And he did every puppet voice told her she was going to be okay. It was just one of those magical moments where you just couldn't believe what you were watching. I know I felt it somehow. Although my mom and dad are magical, though nothing <laughs> like this. <laughs> we said she's awake, she's awake, and I just remember him saying, praise God, praise God. There is one quote that he used to say all the time and he believed was at the root of everything. Love is at the root of everything. All learning, all relationships, love or the lack of it. And he really did believe that love and kindness, empathy and patience could cure everything. He is just like the character he played on TV. I think he's a saint, among saints. I don't know any other way to put it. Mr. Rogers was truly a great neighbor. Beth's story teaches us a great deal about his compassion, care, and love for others.
And in the words of Beth's mom, it was a magical moment when he visited. He really believed that love, kindness, empathy, and patience could cure everything. Yes, Mr. Rogers was truly an outstanding neighbor. And through his work, we can all be better neighbors. Lastly, Mr. Rogers said, anyone who does anything to help a child in his life is a hero to me. Team, you are all heroes. I will never claim to be Mr. Rogers. What an extraordinary human being. However, like you, I do love kids, and like you, I have dedicated my life to serving them, so we all have that in common. And to you, our team, I know that there is some uncertainty right now, and I know that there is probably some concern and a little bit of frustration. Please know that you are cared for deeply. Your thoughts and feelings are appreciated and respected. And while we all know it's about all kids, we completely understand and support the fact that what is best for our kids only occurs if we value and support you, our team. I commit to you as superintendent that we will always be transparent, honest, and open, even in the most difficult times. And I commit to you that we will always follow medical professionals' guidance when dealing with this unprecedented time. And yes, we will always be a helper to you. Nothing is more important to me, our Board of Education, and our central office team than the safety of our students and staff. My door is always open, and I promise to always listen. And in 2021, I ask all of us to commit to be more like Mr. Rogers and work to be a better neighbor. In Mr. Rogers' last episode, he ended by saying, I am proud of you. Team Kenton, I am proud of you. And I am honored to serve our kids with you in this neighborhood. Remember, the Team Kenton neighborhood is strong. And we will get through this together. And yes, even the most uncertain times it is a beautiful day in the KCSD neighborhood. When the day is new, let's have a great 2021 I school year. More ideas and thank you for you. And you'll have things you'll want to talk about. I will too. You always make each day such a special day. You know how by just your being you. There's only one person in the whole world exactly like you, and that's you yourself. And people can like you exactly as you are. It's such a good feeling. A very Team good Ken, feeling. it's a beautiful day the in the KCSD. That we're friends.